My professional focus has been on one of the dirtiest four-letter words that you know. It starts with a letter S. Without this, no, it's not that word. Without this word, you wouldn't have the food that you eat, the clothes that you wear, or the fuel in your vehicle. This word contains twice as much carbon as does the Earth's atmosphere. It's a buffer against climate change. This word is a source of multiple antibiotics, antibiotics that have saved millions of lives. This word is being lost from Iowa 10 times faster than it's being replaced. What is this word? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Soil is the foundation of civilization. History informs us that multiple civilizations exemplified by Mesopotamia, those in the Fertile Crescent, failed because their citizens, like many of us, fail to understand that soils really are our life support system. When their soils were irreparably damaged, so were they. Former President Franklin Delano Roosevelt warned, the nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. Iowa soils are eroding 10 times faster than they are being formed. I grew up on a small farm close to a, a small town of Plainfield in Northeast Iowa. My dad often talked about the importance of soils. One particular Sunday, we received a very heavy rainstorm. My dad called it a gully washer. After the rain stopped, we had to get in the car, drive through the neighborhood to see how much damage this gully washer had done. Well, as we're driving along, Dad would call out names of farmers that he said were doing a particularly bad job of farming because they were farming in a way that let their soils erode, or their soil erode off of their fields into ditches and into streams. He told me something on that ride that I will never forget. He said, son, he said, soils are connected to everything. Without soils, we have nothing. Well, I was entering the age of I know it all. I was about 13 years old. I looked in the rearview mirror to make sure he wasn't looking at me, and then I rolled my eyes. And I thought, Dad, that cannot be right. I mean, I get it. The sweet corn we had, the potatoes, the peas, they came from our garden. We had those for lunch. I know, I planted them in soil. But my shoes, come on, they're made of leather. Leather comes from the hide of animals, which eats grass or hay or corn, which grows in soil. My desk at school, it's made out of wood, which comes from trees, which grows in. That was the beginning of my soil's dilemma. Throughout my life, I've had an incredible passion for the out of doors. I hunt and I fish every chance that I get. Following my soul's dilemma, I began to, to realize the healthiest trees, the best habitat, the best hunting also came on the best soils. I also realized that I lost several fishing holes in the Cedar River because of soil that had washed off of fields that were not taken care of correctly. I began to create this vision that if soils are managed well, soils giveth. If soils are managed poorly, it taketh away. Well, I did graduate from Plainfield High School, and I went on to school here at Iowa State University, where I majored in, guess, soil science. Well, I graduated with a BS. And I thought, you know, sometimes in life you just can't get enough of a good thing. So I went on and got a master's degree in soils and then a PhD in soils. My career path brought me back to Iowa State University where I initially focused on the connection between soils and that outdoor world that captured my passion so well. With time, 
There was a variety of issues that began to emerge. These issues had bright red warning flags on them. And when I connected the red flags in a single story, the story became very challenging and even ominous. The first of those challenging issues is that of global population change. One estimate is that in the next 50 years, we will need to produce as much food as we've produced since the dawn of civilization if we are to meet that growing population demand. The second issue is that of soils themselves. We are literally losing ground, losing ground to produce the food this growing population needs. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that in the 25-year period, 1982 to 2007, we lost 41 million agricultural acres due to urban expansion and associated activities. For perspective, Iowa total area is 36 million acres. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations estimates that in the 20-year period, 2010 to 2030, globally, we're going to lose 7% of the world's ag land due to anthropogenic actions. That equates to the total agricultural expansion potential in all of Brazil. Soils that are not being degraded, the majority of them that are not being converted, the majority of them are being degraded, dominantly through the process of soil erosion. The third flag is climate change. An increasingly solid climate science indicates that future growing conditions are going to deteriorate. We will experience more frequent, intense, extreme rainfalls, the kind of events that drive the land degradation process. Concurrently, we're going to have more frequent drought and heat periods. Periods that create stress trying to grow this crop. Now connect the stress climatic conditions with degraded soils and a hungry world. It's easy to see where a challenging story evolves. In 2015, I received a phone call from an office from the White House. The question I was asked, how long before the rich, dark, black, fertile topsoil of Iowa will be gone? Someone else was thinking about soil erosion too. My response was, can I, can I send you some pictures? The answer was, go for it. So I sent pictures showing what was once Landscape in Iowa that was covered with black, fertile, rich topsoil, the circled areas here, are the light colors where the topsoil is gone. What once was 8 to 14 inches deep is now gone. The response I got, can I show these to the prez? I said, go for it. The next day, I got a rather somber email saying, we are shocked. And again, I remember the words that came from that same oval office of the White House. The nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. So what's it like? What's it like to, to have to grow crops on de degraded land? Let me give you an analogy. You're going to go on a walk through Iowa on a hot summer August day. You're gonna walk 20 miles. You have good genetics, you're in good shape. You just bought a new lunch bucket that will hold two sandwiches, a half a gallon of water, and an apple. As you look through the house to find this lunch bucket, it's gone, you're missing. So what you have to do is you, the best thing you have is a smaller, older lunch bucket that will hold one sandwich and a pint of water. You readjust your performance plans. Instead of walking 20 miles, you said, well, with that amount of food and water, I can only walk 10. 
When we push crops to grow on soils that can marginally supply the nutrients and water that it needs, that performance is reduced too, just like your performance was reduced with less water and food. Then there's, there's part of our community that insists that technology is the solution. Technology is a tool. Technology is not a solution. Let me give you another analogy. The Formula One race car is an incredible piece of technology. On the Indianapolis 500 raceway, it gives you performance, it gives you speed, it gives you everything it was designed to deliver. What kind of performance do you get if you take that same technology and put it on a dirt trail behind the house in the pasture? Same technology. What, what outcome do we get if we take some of the technological advanced cropping systems we have today and put them on soils that are degraded? Now, don't get me wrong. Today's technology in this, in this field is a vast improvement for production purposes than what we've had in the past, even under stressful conditions. But when you take even an advanced technology and put it in a soil that can only supply what that small lunchbox could supply, you get the same response that you have with that Formula One on the dirt trail. Technology is a tool. Technology is not a solution. Okay, so what does, what does my science have to do with any of this? I work with a group of scientists from Iowa State University from the National Soil Erosion Laboratory in West Lafayette, Indiana, the National Lab of Ag and Environment here in Ames, and, and even the University of Iowa. And we've developed a system in which we're estimating soil erosion every day across all of Iowa and sections of other Midwestern states. This project called the Daily Erosion Project has taught us a variety of lessons. I want to share two of those with you. The first lesson is going to come in the form of a color-coded map of the state of Iowa, and I'll show that here shortly. The color codes identify the average annual soil erosion rate for different parts of Iowa that occurred during the period 2008 to 2016. The darker the colors, the greater are the soil erosion rates. The maximum rates in the state were between 20 and 40 tons per acre per year. For perspective, remember, mom nature can reform soils at the rate of one half of one ton per acre per year. Averaged across the state, average acre lost 5.1 tons per acre per year over that time period. Another way of looking at that is that for every pound of corn grain we produced, we eroded or lost more than one pound of soil. I challenge you to, de to develop a successful long-term business plan or sustainability model using those relationships. Okay, the second lesson involves a fingerprint of climate change. I'm gonna show you in the next slide two color-coded maps of the state of Iowa that identify precipitation amounts in two different years. One's a wet year and one's a dry year. 2012 was dry. Most of the state received less than 25 inches. 2014, most of the state received more than 12, 25, with some up to close to 50. Okay, the next map shows the soil erosion resulting from that. The average loss in 2012 is roughly one-tenth of what occurred with the higher, higher rainfall rates. If we continue to do more of what we've already done, we're going to get more of what we've already got. And if we consider the impact of climate change, we're going to get more of what we've already got on steroids. The nation that destroys its soils will destroy itself. Okay, so what can we do? 
What can we do as citizens of Iowa State University, Central Iowa, even the larger global community? The first thing is to become a soils ambassador. Talk about soils. Make people aware of how important soils are. If you're a writer, write about soils. If you're a photographer, take pictures of soils. If you're a poet, write poems about soils. If you know one of the many conservation practicing farmers, they may be using grass waterways, buffer strips, prairie strips, no-till, cover crops. Thank them. Tell them you appreciate what they're doing. Tell them you know it makes a difference. On the other hand, we have fields in Iowa that look like whoever's farming them must believe that tillage equipment is the farmer's best friend or that maybe tillage should be declared a national pastime. We have some fields that look like the planter must have been hanging over the stream edge to get that very last row in. If you know some of these individuals, try to engage in a conversation. Try to inform them that if we take care of the soil, soil will take care of us. And maybe the most important thing you can possibly do is to tell all the mamas that you know, don't let your babies grow up to be plow boys. Have them do no-till, use cover crops and strip till, and grass water ways are a must. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be plow boys. If soil doesn't roam, profits stay home. And water is cleaner for us. No till, plow, plow boys like big toys, thick smoke and loud noise, tilling their soil till it's black. They don't understand they're hurting our land. Eroded soil never comes back. Rivers are crying while their fish are dying. More algae grows every day. With more stormy weather, we must farm land better. Erosion's a high price to pay. Help me. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be plowboys. Have them do no-till, use cover crops and strip till, and grass water ways are a must. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be plowboys. Cause if soil doesn't roam, profits stay home. And water is cleaner for us. No-till has few frills. It doesn't give cheap thrills to the plowboy who farms like his dad. His management tactics, they're not too fantastic. In fact, they're pretty damn bad. So carbon is leaving. So critters are grieving. So structure's a thing of our past. We must educate the masses. We'll kick stubborn asses and... And we gotta do it fast. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be plowboys. Have them do no-till, use cover crops and strip till, and grass water ways are a must. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be plowboys. Cause if soil doesn't roam, profits stay home. And fishing is better for us. Oh, yeah. Hey, thank you.